Hi, I'm Nick Houston here for Gotham Sound and Communications on Gotham Sound TV. Um, thanks for tuning in today. We're talking about uh, the latest, smallest thing in, um, in sound, and this is the Betso TCX2 timecode transceiver. As uh, you can see, the T uh, is for transceiver, but it also could be for tiny. Um, it's about, it takes one AA battery, if you notice, one AA battery, uh, and is about the size of two AA batteries plus the antenna and the BNC. Uh, so for those of you who are not familiar with the term transceiver, a transceiver is something that can both transmit and receive. So this, um, this box can both transmit and receive time code uh, on the Betso network, which is approximately 900 megahertz. Um, so you could have one of these as a transmitter and multiple receivers, and then if for some reason you wanted somebody else to be the time code master, you could turn their um, transceiver into the, into the transmitter and change this to receiver. So it gives you a lot of flexibility to change things around rather than having just one transmitter and multiple receivers. Um, now they can do both. Um, the box itself, as I mentioned, takes uh, one AA battery. Uh, you can get up to 50 hours on one AA battery, um, so that's pretty impressive. And it's super easy to use. Um, you've got your time code in or out, um, depends on which one you're using. So if you're, if you're in transmit mode, this is your time code in. If you're in receive mode, this is your time code out. Uh, you've got the power button and set, and you've got up and down. And to turn it on, there's a couple of ways you could do it. You could just use the old, um, you know, the old power button, but Betso has a nice little trick where if you plug it in, if you plug in a time code source, it turns on automatically and jams. And so now we have it running. Now we have it running jammed from the Steneke uh, GR1 that we have here. So, but that's not enough to just have one. We have to have a receiver to show how that works. So to turn on the receiver, you could also plug it in that, but we'll just uh, turn it on by pushing and holding the power button, and it immediately picks up the signal from the transmitter. Uh, the range on these is pretty impressive. It's 500 meters, so uh, that's about the length of five football fields. So if you're working at a football game or a European football game, uh, which I believe is known as soccer here in America, uh, you would be able to basically get signal from this anywhere in the stadium. Um, which, you know, if you're excited about the playoffs, um, for American football this weekend, uh, you might be able to relate to these, um, to the size of these things. Anyway, um, so yeah, really long, uh, really long range, incredibly accurate. Um, and this also hooks into the Betso network, so it can work with some of the other things that are out there. So for instance, um, Betso has a new S-Box, the S-Box 2, uh, which is pictured here. So that is both a time code master uh, generator and it can be a transmitter or receiver. And then there's the new um, Betso Slate, uh, which has a receiver built into it. So any of these things could broadcast any of those, these, any of those things, any of those things could broadcast any of these things. Uh, so you can set up your own little uh, time code network on that. Now, um, one question that comes up quite a bit is, well, what happens when the network drops out? So I'll, I'll turn it off just so you can see. Um, oh, and one thing that's interesting, I have to unplug this or else it'll keep turning on. Um, one thing that you can see is you have to push and hold power to turn it off, okay? So now if you look here, uh, the time code's still running in sync, nothing's lost. You see you've got the sync light blinking there, but you also notice you have the antenna light blinking on and off, so it's kind of freaking out. Now a lot of people, um, worry about, well, what happens when it loses the network? You know, if we have a camera crew that goes off on its own, goes rogue for a few hours, and then they come back, are they just gonna be completely out of sync? Is everything gonna be recorded um, separately? So we thought about that, and uh, we did a little test, and unfortunately it wasn't quite as long as we would have liked, but we did a little test earlier, um, basically jamming the transmitter uh, into the receiver and then taking the output of the receiver into a GR1, and after almost four hours, um, we came up with less than 0.1 frames of drift. And so we have pictures to show you. You can see that the GR1 is basically turning to the 20, um, to the next frame, 
and so is the Betso that's sitting on top of it, and then, um, and then you can see that the, when comparing the two time codes, it's less than 0.1 frames off. So after three and a half hours, uh, that's pretty good. So you can imagine eight hours would probably, you know, would be less than a frame or maybe a frame, if that. Uh, so pretty accurate. Um, in terms of, you know, how it works in navigating the menus, I'm going to turn this one back on just so you can see it. It's pretty simple. You know, once it's jammed, uh, you push and hold set. Now the thing that's a little bit tricky is just you can't push and hold set. You have to wait until menu lights up. I don't know if you saw that. It was pretty quick. Um, I'll back out and show you again. Push and hold set. The menu button is going to light up and then you let go when the menu button lights up. And boom! There you go. Now you're in the menu. You've got your time code menu where you can uh, set the time code out. So if you're going to use it with a professional camera, you're going to want, to want it to be at plus six. If you're going to set it with a DSLR, which these are awesome for because they're so tiny, you probably want it to be um, much lower, you know, negative 20, something like that. Um, you push and hold set to go back. You have your wireless, so you can choose, you know, what type it is, what, uh, you know, if it's a transmitter or receiver, what channel you have. You can have five different channels. Um, there are different regulations for U.S., Canada, and Japan. This can do all of those, um, so you can change that in there. Push and hold set to go back, uh, and then there's a special menu um, where you can uh, copy the transmit in to the receive out, and then select the battery, the brightness, power, the power saver mode that we talked about, and the display orientation. So it's a pretty simple, and then you could, it has built-in USB on it, so you can do upgrades. So it's a pretty simple, straightforward menu, um, and the receiver is the same side. And um, yeah, it's you know it's yeah it's pretty self-explanatory. The big selling point: small. Yeah, for cameras that are small, like DSLRs, awesome. For uh, camera operators that don't like to have um, you know big time code boxes on their cameras, awesome. Steady cameras, things like that. Um, and then you get the additional, you know, wireless syncing uh, that goes with it. So that's it. That's the whole thing. It's pretty simple. Um, it costs about four hundred dollars. It's available now. Um, and if that's oh, the other thing, sorry, to go along with its small size, it's super small and it has a display. You know, where some things are, you know, small but don't have a display. This actually has a display and buttons for you to be able to look at. You don't need anything else to be able to control it. It just is what it is, how it is. So um, anyway, $400 available now on the website or wherever you want it, wherever other uh, fine audio products are sold. And um, yeah, if there are any questions or concerns, uh, put them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Um, Again, if you want to watch this video or others, you can visit our archives on Vimeo or YouTube. Uh, you can follow us on the Facebook and the Twitter. And if you have any ideas for things you would like to see, please email us at info at gothamsound.com. Thanks for watching.